Hey guys, welcome back to Wing Wednesdays. This is Tucker from mattkiteboarding.com. And today I'm gonna to come here with kind of a unique uh, new spin on Wing Wednesdays. I'll do a brief kind of series with this uh, intermittently and kind of jump in and out if you guys like it. But we're trying something new here. And what we're gonna to do today is tell you why we love wing foiling so much, why it is exploding with interest uh, worldwide, and, and maybe give you, you know, like a clue or like a, kind of like a, a thought process, I guess, to, you know, if it, hey, maybe, maybe it's right for you, or maybe, hey, you should try this aspect of wing foiling if you're already into it, but haven't really gotten into that yet. Um, and, and, you know, I don't know, maybe just uh, dispel, I guess, maybe some of the naysayers out there that still somehow don't accept that wing foiling is a, an awesome new sport and, and really exciting. Well, maybe it's not for everybody, but it is certainly something that uh, a lot of wind sports people or water sports people should be at least a little bit excited or interested in. So uh, let's jump into it, see how this goes. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Tell me your favorite story of wing foiling or maybe the craziest session you've had or the worst session you've had. Uh, whatever, Let, let's open it up a little bit in the comments, talk with each other, and, and have a brief discussion about uh, this new sport and, and where, maybe where it's going or why it's so great and, uh, or where it could go and, and kind of see where that goes. So let's jump into it. First one, here we go. Let's let's throw some mud at the wall and kind of see how it sticks here, so to speak. Um, some favorite things about wing foiling. One thing that I would say um, really opens up for me, and I've noticed, you know, talking with other people that are getting into wing foiling or, or starting to do wing foiling, is the accessibility of it. Um, not only just like the anybody can do it kind of accessibility, but what I mean is like you can do it in almost any body of water where you have wind. Um, you know, for kiteboarding, you need a clean launch area. You need enough water and, and space uh, to be safe, you know, but also just to rig lines and launch a kite and land a kite and all this and that. You know, it can be kind of an ordeal, especially if you don't have just a pristine, nice beach or, you know, maybe it's too crowded um, or there's too many docks in the water, or maybe the, the wind is always onshore, things like that, you know, it can be kind of prohibitive, especially to a new rider. Um, and that's one thing where wing foiling is just really phenomenal. Uh, whereas inland, small inland lakes in the past really have been terrible for kiteboarding. The wind is gusty, it's shifty, you know, it, it might not have clean wind near shore where you need to launch and land. Um, but for wing foiling, that's become kind of a non-issue. And for this video, I've gone out in kind of one of the worst possible situations in our area at least, which is an inland lake, small inland lake, offshore in that inland lake, and the only place the wind is coming through is through a tight 30 yard wide jetty. Um, so in this session we'll show you today, in this discussion, um, it's offshore wind, it's inland lake, it's very gusty, swirly, on and off, terrible wind. There is no way I would ever even consider launching a kiteboarding kite in this kind of a situation. There's docks, there's no place to set up, the wind is terrible, you couldn't even fly the kite, let alone safely, um, and it's offshore. But I was able to get out there and have a blast wing foiling, staying upwind, doing turns, jibes, turn 360s, just having a blast out there. Uh, in, in what would otherwise be a day where I'd be like, oh, maybe I'll do some chores or get something done at home getting out there having a blast on the water and and really you know what I can imagine is one of the worst possible situations aside from of course no wind at all um, so it, it really opens it up to those people out there with terrible launches you know maybe you got a, a small lake and it's just covered with houses and hills and trees and the wind is just nasty and never never clean um, you know, maybe you dare to get a dinghy out in there, but it's still going to be kind of a crappy experience. Wing foiling, if one, once you get the basics down, is going to be a blast in those kind of scenarios. So for me, 
you know, it's really opened up a lot of new riding spots and, and we'll even call them like novelty riding spots, right? Where like, maybe I'm not going out there to boost the biggest jump or ride the best wave on the planet, but I'm gonna get out there on a day I normally wouldn't ride, experience something new, maybe do a little touring around and checking out, you know, some different shorelines or homes and stuff. And, and just challenging myself in those new, uh, new kind of a spot or experience um, or, or just that I can do it, you know. It's, it's a lot of fun to get out there and do that with wing foiling because it is so safe, accessible, and, and handles adverse conditions really well. Um, so that's one thing I've really enjoyed. There's a lot of inland lakes around here. I'm riding new spots that I've never ridden before. I'm like checking out on Google Maps like, Oh man, on this one wind direction, there's not really any good spot to ride. Oh, I can go, you know, a half hour over here and check out this spot. Um, or, or go over there on this new area that, that doesn't have a clean launch, but hey, maybe you can get to the water, you know, by walking through this park or, or out this boat launch or what have you. Um, it, it's really opened it up and make it, made it exciting and new again and, and really just staying close to home, not even traveling to, you know, far off destinations or this or that. You can have all these new riding experiences, all these new uh, locations, and it really makes it that much more exciting. It gets you on the water more, and you know, even on those crappy wind days, you can go out there and have a ton of fun without just mowing the lawn in the same spot over and over and over again, you know, in conditions that aren't as good, you know, as maybe you want, um, you know, and it, it's just so common, I think, in, in you know, wind-dependent or wave-dependent sports, to kind of get stuck in that rut, right? Where it's like, I could go today, but it's just mediocre. Or I could go today, but it's kind of okay. It's just rideable. And I want something more exciting than that. Um, you know, so it allows you to get out there and have fun when the conditions aren't perfect. Of course, if I had to choose, man, I'll have a cranking windy day every day of the week with perfect waves. And that's what I live for. That's what I love the best. But this offers something else, something you know, maybe more adventurous, um, or or it turns on a different part of your brain, you know, more like touring, um, you know, or or just exploring, I guess, out there and having a lot of fun that way. So that's that. Let me know about the craziest spot you've ridden or the best spot you've ridden. Uh, what you like to do? What what really makes you excited about wing foiling? And we'll come back to this session. Uh, or I guess to this, uh, to this series, I should say, um, if you guys like it and maybe talk about some more stuff in depth, uh, <laughs> and talk about some more stuff in depth that we love about wing foiling. Take it easy.